by telling us how you managed to convince the Pope to come to Florida? <laughs> well, actually, I didn't, I didn't uh, convince him. I received a request, you know, I don't remember the exact timing, probably two and a half months ago, uh, on whether or not we would be willing to be the place for the, the gathering of the families. Uh, there were three options presented to the Holy Father, and they were looking for an option in, the, uh, in North America. And uh, you know, after talking over this matter with my staff, uh, being concerned about our financial situation, I, I wrote back and said we certainly would be very, very happy to receive the Pope. And uh, enthusiastically welcomed him, but it, we had to be worried about the pr parameters of the cost. And I thought that in itself might discourage the, you know, the Holy See from choosing Philadelphia, but I think maybe a month ago I received a letter saying Holy Father had uh, enthusiastically chosen Philadelphia and that it would be important for me to come to Milan for the meeting because they would make a public announcement there. So I think it's a really great thing. And uh, when I began to share this with my um, with various constituencies in the archdiocese, there was un unanimous enthusiasm about it. So um, I think it would be a great blessing for us and hopefully for the Church of the United States and hopefully for our country. So. You talked of a smaller celebration than the one uh, Pope John Paul II had here on the park. Oh, no, no, I was talking about, you know, typically, like in, in Milan, they were expecting a crowd of 300,000 people. And I, did, I said, I don't know if we could afford that kind of uh, crowd that we would be uh, comfortable working with a group between 60 and 80,000. But, you know, in Milan, at, at the end, they ended up having about a million people at the closing mass. So um, I don't know how much control I'm actually going to have on the number of people who come. We want to certainly be uh, welcoming of anybody who wants to come to this, you know, especially families, because that's what it's all about. It's an opportunity for families to get to know each other and support one another and, and to be uh, recommitted to family life and enthusiastic about it. Anybody else have any questions? Yes. I'm Elena Perry from the Catholic Standard and Times. Yes. And I was wondering, the world meeting in Milan was uh, held over five days. Do you uh, foresee the event being shorter in Philadelphia to keep the expenses down? I, I think it's probably going to be the same length of time. Uh, the typical pattern is for the first three days to be a time of study, listening to lectures, uh, in gathering together in smaller groups and having discussions about things. And then the last two days are dedicated to the event with the Holy Father himself. In uh, Milan, there was a, a wonderful celebration on Saturday night out in the open, uh, full of music and uh, testimonies on the part of married couples and, and their families. And then on Sunday morning, we had the closing mass, which was really an extraordinary experience, too. So I think it'd be pretty typical of what these things are like. Now, it's important for everybody to understand, including myself, that we're not the primary planners of this. It's planned by the Pontificate Council for the Family, which is the Holy Father's office for promoting family life, and uh, they'll be the ones who give the general parameters of our celebration. What kind of a morale boost do you feel this will give the archdiocese? I mean, it's been bad, with some pretty bad news, consolidating schools and right. parishes, and then, of course, the sex abuse scandal. Right. So now it seems like a, almost a perfect time for something to, to lift the spirits of the archdiocese. It really is. A, it, was a, it was a great surprise to me that uh, this option became available to us. And I, I don't know uh, where to turn in, in terms of my gratitude, but the first place I turned was to God. I think God is giving us an opportunity to, to have some good news in the midst of a very difficult time, as you said. So uh, it was a, you know, like grace. Grace is an unexpected gift from God. That's what the word means. Uh, this certainly was an unexpected gift, and I know it's from God, so I think it'll be a great blessing for us. Do you think it'll do much, much to help the morale of the... Uh... Well, I, I would hope so, but one never knows that one can't... When it comes to morale, one can't give morale to somebody else. Some people either choose to be hopeful or they choose not to be. And morale is, in some ways, a matter of self-decision and choices on our part. So when people talk about bad morale, the first thing you have to do is work on their own morale in order for it not to be bad for for other people. Are, are yes. Right yes. Uh, so you, uh, have you had any conversations with any city officials? Did you give them a I did. I, I wrote a letter to uh, the mayor, of course, because this has a great impact on Philadelphia. I also wrote a letter to the governor, uh, notifying them that this was going to be announced on Sunday. Um, I haven't heard back from them, but I wasn't able to, to give them the information until I think I wrote those letters on Wednesday and sent them Thursday, because the Holy See wanted to be the uh, body to make the announcement. And once you begin to share news outside a narrow circle, 
it becomes very public. So I didn't feel like I could notify them too early. You see the archdiocese and obviously you have to work very closely with city officials. You oh, absolutely. The logistics and you expect that will well, be certainly. a long process. We'll do our best to be, uh, as we try all the time, to be good citizens and to understand that any decisions we make have impacts on the broader community. So it's important that their insights are valued and we value them. So what are the other cities? I don't know. I don't oh, know okay. the other cities. Do you know why they, did anybody indicate why Philadelphia was on the short list? Nobody indicated why Philadelphia was chosen. People have asked me that. You know, they asked me for the, the motivation of the Pope for choosing Philadelphia. And any answer I, I give would be certainly guessing. And uh, your guess is as good as mine in terms of the actual reality. Do you think it's because they like the Archbishop? Yeah. Was it because they like the Archbishop? I hope they like the Archbishop, but I don't think that would be very uh, much of a factor. Can you just a little bit, sorry. Um, uh, the various venues to, to accommodate that many people are events held in schools, parishes. Where, where I, the locus of these? I think that we'll need a, a major assembly place. Uh, typically, on a, on the morning of the of the days of the actual event, there's a um, a major lecture given by some notable person to as many people who want to come. So you need a very big meeting hall for that. And then in the afternoon, there are these smaller group for discussion. So we've talked about using our schools, of course, and. Uh, we have to certainly rent some public space in order to have these larger gatherings. You talked a lot about cost and what could be afforded. Is it that the Philadelphia Archdiocese would then be picking up a lot of the cost, or how does that work? Well, I certainly we have to do some of the initial costs. I think people who jo who come pay a fee, registration fee for the <clears throat> for the workshops at least, and so there's some recoup of money from that. But in terms of the initial uh, down payment for things, I. I think what we'll do is ask someone to form a corporation that would receive gifts in order to uh, support this. So we'll have to do some major fundraising, not just in the our size Philadelphia, but in our country. And uh, uh, there'll be a lot of work, and I, that'll be in our hands. It'll be my responsibility to do that. You met with Pope Benedict when you were in I had the privilege of meeting with him during Mass when the announcement was made. I We had a chance to visit very briefly about this. and. He expressed enthusiasm, and you know, I said I look forward to seeing you in Philadelphia. He said he hoped to be there, but he reminded me that he's 85 years old, and he would be 88 at that time. And God willing, he'll be with us. But he's a man who trusts God's providence, and I do too. And if he's no longer pope by then, uh, his successor is likely to follow through with his. Well, I, I think this is a this is an event sponsored by the Holy See, by the by the Pope himself. And the custom has been for him to come, except in circumstances where he wasn't able to be there. Um, I also had a chance to have lunch with him on Sunday afternoon after the Mass and had a chance to visit with him uh, again about, about Philadelphia briefly after that luncheon, and it was a wonderful experience. He's had some well-publicized physical issues. Uh, do you feel he'll be able to make it here? Oh, I, I, you know, he's a lot better shape than I would be at the age of 85, so I think he's he's doing great. You know, he um, went to World Youth Day in Australia, uh, you know, when he's been, since he's been Pope, and uh, more recently, where was the, the most recent one? In Spain, yeah, he was in Spain uh, last year for it, and so he does quite a bit of traveling. He's been to Africa, he's, you know, he's just been everywhere, so. Do you have a sense of how many days he would no, those kind of things haven't been discussed yet. Typically, he comes at the end for the for the last two days of the event, much like World Youth Day. What was it like to sit and talk with him, and what, what did you talk about? Well, I was with a family from the United States, a military family who were from South Carolina, and uh, I had asked them to come with me so that there would be a family representation to uh, represent our country at this uh, mass. Uh, and surprisingly, uh, the, the, the six of them and myself were invited to lunch, and not only invited to lunch, but to the same table as the Pope. And there were probably eight or ten tables, and a lot of cardinals and archbishops there, and the civic leaders of Milan, and the people at table were the Pope, and I think there were six cardinals at table, and then the uh, six members of that family, the youngest being two and a, one and a half years old, the oldest being in the fifth grade, uh, the parents and myself, and uh, you know, we talked. You know the type of things you talk about a table with uh, with someone like the Pope. Everybody was a little bit nervous, and but the little kids in the, in the family got up and went over and ran around the other side of the table and hugged him, which was a beautiful experience. So, uh, well, actually, uh, we 
consulted the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops about who, which family would be a good family. They were aware of who had registered and who hadn't, and uh, they helped us find the family. And it was a family that sacrificed a whole lot. They went over on military transport and went early so they had to make sure they'd have a chance to catch the plane. You know, that's, you can't, that's kind of first come, first serve for those kind of things. And they traveled in Italy for a while living at homes of people. That was the, the Pontifical Council of Family arranged housing and homes. So they, they don't, don't have a lot of resources. It was a large family and with little kids. I mean, it was just extraordinary that they sacrificed so much to be there. And I think God rewarded them with this great surprise, which was something I didn't know about, they didn't know about, until we actually went into the room where the dinner was. And there are name plates, our names were at the table exactly across from the Holy Father, which was, you can imagine their experience. I've had the opportunity for lunch with Pope John Paul II, you know, several times actually in the past, because when you're a bishop, you have those opportunities. Um, this was the first time I've had lunch with Pope Benedict. But, you know, for a family not expecting something like this, it would, it would just be really quite an extraordinary experience. And, and for me, the great joy was their experience of uh, this opportunity to be with the Holy Father. It was lunch. It was lunch. We had a pretty good lunch. You know, we <laughs> all be. Was lunch well, the, the lunch was uh, a ham and uh, artichokes appetizer, and then um, uh, risotto milanese for the uh, pasta dish, and then and uh, some kind of um, uh, beef with uh, tuna sauce. You know, uh, Did the kids even it's veal tonata is what they call it. <laughs> the kids. Uh, ate some of it. They were most enthusiastic about the rice and then the dessert, which was wild strawberries. You spoke of your initial reluctance or concerns about the expense of hosting something like this. Right. Uh, have you come up with any kind of a ballpark figure no. of what that might entail? No, we really don't have any idea yet. You know, the Pontifical Council for the Family is a group we'll work with and they're just finishing up in Milan. They may not even be back in Rome yet today. And they told me they wouldn't want to begin serious planning until September, October. So that's when we'll get around to that. We're already going to be contacting different venues in the city here, though, in order to see what's available for some time in 2015. Even the date hasn't been selected. So it's, 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 it's going to be an expense for the church, but maybe a windfall for the city. Well, I, I would I would think that if you have anywhere like 300,000 people or a million people, of course, a million people would be people of the Philadelphia area too. But if there, it certainly would be something that would attract a large number of people. Uh, that's always beneficial to a city, I think. So, I can, yes, Father. Archbishop, could you say something about the icon? Uh, the, you know, the symbol of the uh, for various papal events, there are symbols like World Youth Day. There's a cross, which is symbolic of World Youth Day, and from one World Youth Day to the next, they pass that cross on to the next city that receives it. Uh, the symbol for uh, this international meeting of the families is a, an icon, which is a you know a stylized picture of the Holy Family, uh, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Um, but the, the, it's very large. It would be as uh, certainly as large as that window, I think, or the, that mirror was back there, and it's it's made uh, with little pieces of stone. You know, it's a mosaic, so it's not the kind of thing that you carry all over in your baggage. It'll be shipped here as a symbol of the responsibility that Philadelphia now has that's been passed on to us from uh, the Archdiocese of Milan. Have you thought about where you'd like to exhibit? Oh, it'll be in our cathedral, I'm sure. I don't know where else we'd put it. Are, are these events typically done in warm weather so we can expect sort of Oh, I, it's going to be sometime during the vacation time so families can actually come to it. I think that was clear from uh, what I heard from the Holy See that they would want it to be in the summer, you know. And so, although our summer is the winter in South America, as you know, in the Southern Hemisphere, but that's typically when it's held, sometime in the late spring, or early summer. So I w my best guess would be sometime in July or August of 2015, but that's nothing more than my best guess. In talking about expense, can you talk all about the well, I can talk generally about it if you have a specific questions that you'd like to. Been to how much has been spent? Uh, it's a, it's, you know, I've only got back from Milan last night, and so the only contact I've had on this that, uh, that I'm aware of yet are emails that came in, and there were very few of them that came in. And they were positive about having a financial report that was clear. So 
the only experience I've had thus far, and I haven't even looked at today's mail because I came here from a meeting and began at 9.30 this morning. Um, so I don't know yet. I asked my staff at our meeting today uh, what the reaction's been, and they said it's been rather quiet. Perhaps uh, Donna Fierro can tell you what kind of response the, the um, communications office received on the matter. She would know better, and I haven't had a chance to visit with her yet. I just saw her now as I was coming in here from, uh, I haven't seen her since I went off to Milan. But we try to make it as clear as possible so people will know what the situation is and see how serious things are financially. You know, we really do have serious issues because for many years now, our, we've been spending more each year than we brought in. And it doesn't take long before the savings of a diocese would disappear, that kind of deficit spending. What about how you're managing the, the, the clergy sex abuse and how you're paying for that, that where that money's coming from? Can you well, I, I think I said in, my, in the letter that accompanied the report that uh, none of the money's used that comes in from the, um, the uh, annual campaign, you know, the cash shares campaigns being used. We're, we're paying for those costs out of savings and out of the sale property, excess property of the archdiocese. Then paying for an event like this, does that put well, we want to, no, I think we, well, we expect that this, this um, event with the Holy Father would be paid for by gifts that we receive specifically for that from around the country and maybe other places too. So we're going to do fundraising for it. But anytime you, you do fundraising, you have to spend some money. So I, certainly we're, gonna, we're going to have, it's going to cost us something up front but hopefully not very much, and then hopefully we'll get into the fundraising soon, and, and that'll cover the costs for us. Archbishop, on the question of the, uh, the rather large figure for the sex abuse uh, handling, um, do you anticipate that the, the, the cost will be diminished this year? I certainly hope so. But the report doesn't include this quarter. Oh, when you say this year, right? You mean in 2000? Oh, that's right. You've got the fiscal year. Don't yeah, you? Could be, I'm beginning 2012, 2000, certainly I hope so, but the larger amount of expense is going to be in the 2011, uh, 2012 year. And we haven't released that report yet. We just released the one from the year previous. So, so the $11 million number that was... Well, that's, that's, an that's an estimated amount of money. If you remember the report, I said it, up to this time, we've spent this kind of money, some of it last year, some of it this year. So the specific amount in this year's uh, financial world, I don't know yet because we haven't closed those books yet. And we won't until the end of June. I don't know, really. I, I always hesitate to make statements because if it's not correct, then I'll be told, why didn't you tell us the truth the first time? And so, how, and I, this, how disheartening is it for you to, to see that dollar figure? Well, it's you disheartening know, to me. Towards that. Well, it is disheartening for me and for other people of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. I don't think there's any, anybody who would be anything other than disheartened about it. It's a great sadness, really, that people were hurt and that... Uh, the costs have been so great for the people of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Going forward, do you see numbers like that continuing? In, in the I certainly hope not. I really don't know, though. And Archbishop, would you care to share with us your thoughts on the possible fate of Monsignor? No, I, I'm, we're really, you know, there's a gag order about the trial, so it's important not to comment on that publicly. You don't have any impressions in general? I have no comments about that right now. Prosecution. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't speculate, so I don't know. Is there anything being looked at now, or is that all pretty much? I, it, my, my letter actually commented on that bit, so I just re point you back to the letter I wrote with our financial report. It was a great adventure going to Milan. You know, I didn't know what to expect, and I, um, I was actually very touched by the whole gathering. So if that did uh, that kind of positive thing for me, um, it's going to do so much more when it's actually here and the people of our own archdiocese are involved. So I'm, even though it's going to be a lot of work and it's going to be a complicated situation, I'm very much looking forward to uh, the International uh, Meeting of Families in 2015. I hope you'll all be there with us for that celebration. Yes, David? I should know the answer to this, and I'm not sure I do. Uh, did you not host uh, the World Youth Day in Denver? Uh, that was my predecessor, Cardinal oh. Stafford, did that. Okay. I was on the committee of bishops that helped plan for that, though, and it really was a very large, complicated matter. Uh, typically, the uh, World Youth Day gatherings are much bigger than the, the gathering for families. Um, but who knows, maybe we'll surprise people, and this will be even more of a gathering. It's 
it's got to be a relief to have something positive to look forward to after being battered by so much bad news. Well, it, you know, it's the bad news has been bad news, but people have received me very well since I arrived here last September, so I don't have any complaints. You know, the people of Philadelphia have been very good to me, and I'm grateful for that. Would there be a, planning, a local planning committee to work with the Yes. Yeah, we're already beginning to talk about that. And uh, there'll be a local planning committee, there'll be a national planning committee, and there'll be an international planning committee. So. Can I ask you one more question about the, uh, your letter? It mentions these uh, nine separate civil lawsuits filed in Philadelphia County against the Archdiocese. Have those been settled? What's the status of well, that? Well, you know, that so was, that was, they, were all put, they were all put on hold when uh, the, the uh, trial against... Uh, uh, involving once you know, Lynn was uh, begun, so there's been no movement on those since that time. Okay, so those are dollar figures you could potentially be looking uh, yes. at in the future. Who knows what that means? Yeah. Okay, thank you, everybody. I'm thank grateful you. that you gave us this, this time, and, and uh, we, know you're, we know your time is the most valuable thing you have, so I'm very grateful. So thank, thank you. you thank you. Thank you.